welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're gonna go ahead and review my 2018 Kia Stinger GT1 which is over there and then uh, this video is gonna be a little bit longer than my usual videos because I'm gonna try to be as comprehensive as I can possibly be and then I'm gonna always try to be as objective as I can be but sometimes that's kind of hard because you know there's just a lot of things that you might like that it's kind of hard to be stay objective for but but uh, I went but stay tuned and then uh, we'll get this video rolling and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so the exterior, exterior color is called snow white and then it's a very very bright white ish color and in this video it it, it doesn't look like that it's dirty but actually it's very dirty because I haven't had time to actually wash it because it's always raining here in Atlanta and the days that it's not raining it's always freezing so I haven't had much t much time to actually go ahead and uh, wash it but um, it's called Snow White and then we have these 19 inch wheels over here and then we have these uh, Michelin Sport 4 tires which, which come as standard on the GT1 if I'm not mistaken. I think these are all standard starting from the GT, GT1 and GT2 but for the for, but for 2019 and up I'm not really sure if they've gone over to using new tires or they still use these Michelin Sport 4s. These are these are pos these are these are probably the best tires you can get on the market for this uh for this price range and then uh they're a little stiff but they're really they're really really grip the road well and then and then uh so the setup the the tire setup here is staggered so we have 255 35 19s here in the back and then in the front we have 225 40 19s so and since it's real wheel drive it makes sense you know of course it's going to be staggered towards the back so we can have more traction but and then you also have these you also have these led led tail lights and led turn signals but one thing that's not led is the back is the backup light over there but that's a simple mod that you should, you should, it's not expensive to fix and then we have and then we have these quad exhausts these quad exhausts they're real exhaust connected connected and they're, they're not fake and we also have these and along with that we have these LED head LED headlights they're not they're, unfortunately since this is the GT1 it doesn't have the, uh, the auto level headlights as far, as far as I know and then we also have these uh, LED daytime running lights and then uh, these um, LED turn signals so basically LED lights everywhere and then um, and then this and then we and then yeah, I don't know if you, about you but I think that the that this grill over here looks a little funny and it doesn't look particularly too aggressive and then this is the housing for the cruise control if I'm not mistaken and then we have a lot of sensors here parking sensors one two three four and then these side vents they're actually they're actually functional they're actually functional to help cool down the wheels and then now we also have some more some more vents over here which goes through so basically basically this car is is designed for air is designed for air you know to be aerodynamically efficient the only thing that's fake here is this these um these fake uh vents in the um, in the hood but other, other than that everything's functional and then uh and then if you were to get the 2.0 stinger this would be a chrome color and then these only come in the gts gt gt1 gt2 and then and then the I'm not sh I'm not sure if the regular if the regular Stinger gets the quad exhaust too or it only has a uh, dual exhaust but I think they all have quad exhaust it's just that um, in the GT they're all functional so 
so now it's time to go inside because it's cold and then uh, this is the key for the stinger which I really like because it even though it's not real leather it feels really high quality and then it just grips in your hand very easily and then you also have this keychain over here it says stinger which is nicely nicely engraved so since it's since it's uh you don't need you just have to keep your key in your hands and then if you have if you haven't noticed it also has it also has a feature called smart key detection or whatever I forgot but uh, basically if it detects your key it'll open up and all these lights will will turn on to in, to indicate that you're close to the car so it helps to, it helps it helps you to see better at night uh, the one thing though it doesn't have it doesn't have sensors on the back so you have to press this button all the time to open it which is kind which is kind of annoying but you get you, but you get used to it like I did and then you just you know just press this button on the on the key fob and I'm not sure what that song is that that's played that you just that you heard just now but it 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 comes on it comes on when you turn off the car and when you first get inside the car but I've heard that it might be the Korean national song or something but I don't know I usually just turn it off but but for for the purpose of this video uh, I, I turned it on for you guys I said guys again I'm sorry yeah. but once you sit once you're inside the cabin here it feels very it feels very big at least it feels big at least compared to the 440 but what you notice here is that the the headroom here suffers a little bit so you have more leg room but you have less headroom here and um, everything here feels very very quality for, at least for this price range i mean kia did a good job of of designing of the interior even though even though the interiors you know look like look like an audi interior or mercedes interior with these vents they're, they're i like these vents though they're really they're really they're really quality at least especially when you want to turn off the, the the vents you hear those satisfying clicks and then um and then the center console here is just it just looks very just looks very good especially in person but the one thing that my car doesn't have is a shift by a wire so so basically all stingers will have this will have this regular transmission knob as, except for the GT2 which has the shift by a wire so shift by a wire is basically those transmission knobs that you see in BMWs Mercedes Audis well, at least the newer Audis, and um, you 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 have these you have these uh, auto hold auto hold stop button, which is very convenient if you're if you live in a traffic traffic filled city like I do in Atlanta. Parking park automatic parking, which it, which engages and disengages every time you press on the gas and every time you turn off the car, and then you have this traction control button. You have these ventilated seats. I don't have cool seats because that's only available in the GT2 and then you have these select drive modes and then you have these parking sensors which you can turn on and turn off and you have these auto stop button which I auto start stop button which I always turn off because it's really intrusive and the annoying thing is you have to turn it off you have to turn it off manually every time you start the car but back to the back to the front here you have these you have these nice steering wheel, these flat bottom steering wheel, which has this GT GT badge in the bottom. Only the GTs will have this uh, flat bottom steering wheel, whereas the whereas the rest of this whereas uh, the 2.0 Stingers will have this just a regular steering wheel with no no G, GT button. But I wish that Kia gave us a K gave the Stinger a special badge like. Like this car deserves its own badge, and I don't know why. I don't know why uh, Kia, at least Kia USA, doesn't doesn't just put it all on their cars because 
because the in Korea in if, in Korea I believe they have their own special badge which we're gonna put on this car anyways and sometimes in the future but it's just a nitpick that I have when you're driving and this all feels very nice and then you have this logo sticking up but nevertheless the one the 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 quality of the steering wheel feels nice but it's just that I wish it was more meaty like it was in the 440 and then we would be perfect and then we have these paddles paddle shifters which look aluminum but they're not they're actually plastic they don't have a lot of click to them which I'm kind of disappointed but well at least they look great at least and um, over here you have you have a uh, automatic automatic up and down for the drivers and the front passengers only the back it's all manual I believe the GT2 gives you all four I even I, I don't think even the GT4s get all four but anywho you have these you have these uh, two person memory seats which are great they're linked they're linked with they're linked towards the steering which I'm not mistaken and uh, you have these metal you have these uh, Harman Kardon uh, premium stereo sound which you only get in GT1 and GT2 and um, and and uh, I like these I, I, these feel very very quality and then uh, yeah another thing to go over is just how wait actually let me start the car first so put on, so press your so put your foot in the brake in the brake push the brakes and then just press this button right here so the seats will automat will auto will automatically uh reset to your to the to the whichever whichever memory seats it was it was um i remembered last time and then uh, as you can see here as you can see here we have two very clean instrument panels the, tach the tachometer and the speedometer on the right and then um and then you also have this large uh screen in the middle which you know tells you all your information that you need so this is so this is basically how much speed you're going this is your you know your your gas mileage calculations and then this is your compass you have your compass here and then you also have your tire pressures you have your you have your um i think i never used the uh the cruise control before so i don't know what this does i think this is for the cruise control yeah and then we also have this uh, driver's assistant warning which i always turn off because little fact is i always turn off these driver's assistant stuff because i never because i sometimes i find them to be a little bit too intrusive and I uh, and then I also have this. Um, we also have a lot of cu customization available here, guys. So it's just it's just amazing. You can turn off the ambient light. There's a lot of ambient light that you can choose from. It's not 64 colors, but it, but it's, but it's, but it's enough. And then uh, we also have headlight this headlight delay when you turn off the car. The one thing though, I for, which I forgot to mention is that. Um, since this is the GT1, it does not have the heads-up display, but but I'm but it's not really something that you would miss out a lot on. But and then you also and then you also have your G-force here. You have your you have your uh, gauges here, oil temperature, your torque, and your boost. And then you also have your lap timer. The one thing though is that this this infotainment display system it looks a little bit tacky to me. It looks a little bit tacky because of how they implemented it, you know. If they did, if they if they just integrated it with the dashboard a little bit better, it would look less tacky. But for now, this is one one of my major dislikes of this car. And then we and then since we don't have any control knobs like we do in the Germans to control it, we had we just have to you know it's all touchscreen. I don't like touchscreens, but. We have this. We have these buttons to help navigate through it, though. So press map, which is already in the map. Then navigation. You could just press on 
there and then uh as his media radio and i have to say though this harman kardon stereo system sounds amazing if, especially for longer trips and then the seats you have for the gt you have this nicely embro embroidered here and um forgot the seats and then for these seats these are i believe 10 ways because you can adjust you have a i'm not sure if you can see that or not but we have we have lumbar we have lumbar support we have uh we don't have it we had it we don't have a thigh extender that's only available in the gt2 and then we also don't have the the bolster adjustment here like we do in the gt2 but these bolsters are really aggressive and they keep you in place uh and these are these kind of seats suit anybody and basically anybody these are these are big these are kind of big for me and i wish that i i bought the gt2 so that i can have the seat extenders but but they work just fine and then um and then uh i believe these are 10 adjustable so you can so you can change your lumbar you can move your lumbars position and then and then your height adjustment and then your there's seat adjustment here but basically these are very nice seats and very comfortable in most most cases but i found them a little bit too stiff for longer trips i'm not sure if that's because of the suspension or because of the seat but because they are very very meaty coming to the back here it feels it feels very very luxurious everything feels nice if you sit if you if you sit in the back i i never sit in the back so so whenever i do sit in the back it just feels nice everything just feels like a premium car and it's not like something you would find in a kia but here we are we have a kia that looks that looks and feels very luxurious so at least for its price range and then we also have these nice these uh, rear vents which also have nice clicks to them and then you you can decide you could turn on and turn off the vents here and then we also have a we have three speakers down here we have three speakers over there so total and all, I'm counting about 14, 14 speakers. So 3, 3, 3, 3, 12, and I guess 13. I don't know, 13, 13 speakers. But they, they all sound amazing. And then if you're in the back, you have more. This is set to my driver's seat, and I'm about 6 feet even, or 5'11", and then my my leg here fit perfectly and then um they fit perfectly so i'm they fit perfectly and i have more leg room i can still move around well, somebody shorter than me they, they definitely can move around but as far as the headroom goes the headroom is a little bit okay it's too dark so headroom here if, if I if I were to sit all the way back my hair would be brushing up against the ceiling all the time so I so it's a little bit less headroom than what you would find in the 440 but you have less but you have less uh, I mean you have more head uh, leg room than you do in the 440 and it's and it's easier to get in and out of this car than the 440 but you have less headroom so that's kind of Since we're still in the city, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and put put it leave it in uh, comfort. So one thing that I want to tell you that this the the Stinger GTs they all come with a 3.3 liter twin turbo v6 and then they all they produce about if i i don't i'm not ex exactly sure 
how much the horsepower is but I'm sure it's rated at 360 horsepower and 370 something uh, pound-feet of torque so so the so that's that's a lot of that's a lot that's a good bargain I mean like for but the base GTs they start at about three the three three uh, thirty six thirty eight thousand and then just for, just with thirty thirty six thousand thirty thirty eight thousand you can already you can already get a twin turbo V6 that produces almost 400 horsepower and this goes from 0 to 60 it's in about 4.7 seconds with launch control and going over these bumps you can feel that compared to the 440 this feels stiffer the suspension feels stiffer feels more sportier than 440 which is odd because this is supposed to be a GT car so it's supposed to be a little bit soft softer but it's still in comfort mode it's still it's still comfortable enough that it's not anything too jarring or anything I hope you can hear th those bumps on, on this on this uh, camera But the steering wheels nice and small, nice and the leather feels nice. I forgot to run it. I forgot to run the hot control. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna put this in custom mode. So you have eco, smart, comfort, sport, and custom. Custom. So I set my custom mode. So just have more more sound but everything else is basically still in comfort and uh, what, 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 you hear, what you're hearing right now is uh, basically uh, piped in sound from piped in sounds and these are synthetic and um, I'm not really the kind of I'm not really the kind of person that uh, that's gonna criticize piped in sounds or not but as long as there's more sounds I'll, I'll take it <laughs> I mean this car is quite enough for a car that produces this, this much power it doesn't have a lot of sound to it especially from the outside and even though Kia says that they made it louder for for uh, for the US it's not that much louder I mean can Canadians you get the my bimodal exhaust which you, which you can you know which is basically better than what we have. So we have a traffic light here, and the auto start stop turns on. And I have to press this again. I have to press the auto hold. I have to press the traction control. Whenever I drive this, I always turn on the traction control. But but when you're driving casually, the the shifts are very smooth, and then you know, and then you don't notice a lot of turbo lag. It's basically idling just to just to get around the city. It's at 1,100 RPMs right now. Let it go. Yeah. Gotta gotta let ladies go first. And these Brembo brake calipers. They, I mean, they, they they work fantastic. I mean, there, I mean, there are some instances where I almost crashed, and I almost crashed because I turned off the collision mitigation system, and um, I always turn that off because sometimes it's intrusive. Sometimes if it detects anything that that covers up the sensor, it just thinks you're about to crash, and then yeah. And then if it weren't for these brake calipers, I. I don't know, maybe, maybe things are gone so but coming into the highway there's no traffic yet so we're gonna put in sport mode and then we're gonna do hard pull right by now and once you put it in sport mode it's like you just let a lion off the cage it's just the power the power is just instantaneous when you when you press on the gas the, the turbo lag's not as the turbo lag you only notice it when you're when you're flooring it from a standstill and even then 
there's not a lot of there's not a lot of turbo lag. And let, let's see one more time here. I'm gonna press on the gas a little bit. And it's and then the and then the Z and then the Z. I, uh, this transmission is an eight-speed. It was in-house produced by Kia, and then it works fantastic. It, it knows when to downshift. When I, it knows when to downshift. And then if you put if you match the, tr the throttle about halfway in, it'll downshift two two gears or so, and then gives you the power that you need. So it's not a bad trans it's not a bad transmission, but it's not as quick as ZF uh, ZF like in the 440 years. And then let's try to use these uh, paddle shifters. So this will be on sixth gear, fifth gear, fourth gear. There's a slight delay. It's a little bit slower than the ZF the ZF uh, transmission that you can find in, in my 440. But it's fast enough that you 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 don't you're not worried about it. Then we're in fourth gear, shift to fifth gear, sixth gear. Overall, fantastic transmission. So let's say let's say we want to switch lanes here, and then um, six gear, seven gear. So overall, for cruising, this car this car is great. But in sport mode, the the bumps that you feel on the road, you can feel every bump on the road. It's just maybe it's because of the, maybe it's because of the tires, maybe it's because of the way the suspension is set up. But but it's something that you can live with. But it's just that for longer road trips, it's better not to put this in sport mode all the time. Otherwise, you'll probably kill your back. Well, at least here it kills my back. So I'm gonna shift this in eighth gear. So I'm gonna, gonna put this back in automatic mode. Put this in comfort because it's not a lot of room for me to play around. And even in comfort mode, if you need more power, you just press on the gas. You just press on the throttle just a little bit, and it gives you more power. It's still willing to downshift one or two gears, just like it would in support mode. But the difference is, it doesn't. It, the throttle response is just not as. It's just not as. Uh, it, it's just not as uh, fast. There's a little bit of lag. And uh, I don't hear a lot of road noise or wind noise, and that so the cabin's very, very well insulated. And I guess that word that, that's either good or bad, depending how you look at it. But from an exhaust sound point, point of view, it's, kind of, it's bad because you don't hear a lot of the sound. It sounds great when you're on the outside, but when you, once you're inside, you, you don't, you don't, it's basically muffled. Acceleration number two, and that's already way over the speed limit, guys. It's just it's just crazy how this this car has so much power in sport mode, and then and then uh, yeah. So this car is really the perfect the perfect combination of style of style. Practicality, power, and comfort. The, but the big help, but the big drawback to this is that since it weighs nearly four thousand pounds, when you turn, when you turn, uh, you can feel you can feel the weight that this car has. So that would make this more of a Korean muscle car than a Korean sports car. At least that's my opinion. Because when you when you're just going, when you're just going in a straight line, this car feels so powerful. But when you're, but when you're, but when you're uh, trying to test its handling, uh, you feel that the weight is hindering this car. Even though it has the Michelin Sport 4, it's you, you feel, it feels floaty. 
it feels very floaty and loose. So maybe some sway bars can help can help with that. But but that, but that's that's it for the that's it for the review today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this thorough review. And if it wasn't as thorough as you would like, I'm sorry because uh, because I don't I don't I don't remember all the features and the little specs that this car has. But those are just some of the things that 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 stands out to me. I hope you like this video. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel.